Okay, so it's been a little while since I've made a video in relation to the lead screw CNC machine. Um, I've just been distracted with real life, the recent uh, Christmas holidays and other projects on the main channel. Um, one of which is actually running at the moment. I'm using the other CNC machine to sharpen a plane iron. Um, so you're going to hear this in the background for a little while while that's doing that. I'm trying to multitask. If it turns out that the noise in the room is too annoying, I'll just put a voice over this. Um, but I'm at the stage now where I want to build the controller for the new CNC machine. Uh, my plan is to actually dismantle the bigger machine and stick with a smaller machine. I want the controller to be future proof so I'm going to try and throw everything uh, at this build. I've got a rough diagram of how I think this is going to fit together um, and I'm basing some of this on pre-existing stuff. I will link to all the sources um, in the description and on the website and so on. Uh, where credit is due. I definitely wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for the information available out in the in the public domain um, to work with this. If the first controller box I made was anything to go by I wouldn't take that diagram as reference just yet. The first thing I want to do is combine some of the components into modules which I can assemble onto a board that will act like the removable panel in an electrical enclosure. Now is a good time to mention I've been provided with some components by Stepper Motor Online in the form of these drivers and several power supply units, so many thanks to them. Anyway, I rushed to mount the power supply units and motor controllers, and later, when I was sleeping in bed, I realised they were all wrong. I should have really installed these the other way around, would have made accessing the screw terminals a lot easier. I should have staggered the terminals of the power supply units so I could install them facing upwards, making them a little more accessible. I should also reduce the space between all the components so the overall size of the enclosure is not the same size as the CNC machine I'm trying to replace. I'll just go pause the other CNC machine so we can hear what these power supply units sound like. All the lights turned on, so that's a good start. I'm taking the 6mm ply mounting plates off the power supply units. I want to replace them with 1.5mm thick aluminium, which I'm going to cut from some 40mm angle bar which I had left over from the drag chain install. I carefully cut the angle bar in half along its length, so I was left with one piece which was 40mm wide and another around 36 I then modelled the mounting face of the three power supply units based on a combination of their online PDF diagrams and my caliper measurements. I then worked out where to scribe and punch marks for the mounting holes. I also made sure to measure from the same edge in case I made any mistakes when cutting. deburring the back okay that looks a hell of a lot better I can see I can access all of the terminals from the top there's a centimetre gap between each of the power supply units which should be enough to let air circulate around. So on the opposite side I'm just going to put some of these um, cable tie self adhesive tacks that you normally put inside computer cases. Mm. 
just somewhere in the middle. I'm undoing this as well. You can see the difference in spacing. I think I'll just put five, five to eight millimeters between each one. As long as there's a fan nearby, I think that should be more than enough uh, space for air to circulate around. Okay, I've cut some pieces of angle aluminium to 150 mil. It's about 20. 425 um, about that much and all the all of these are going to be bolted on like that okay so I've mounted these on they're more or less okay managed to draw one hole in the wrong place they're pretty sturdy, although not perfectly square, but... And all of these terminals can come out of these sockets. I can then screw whatever wires I need in and then put them back. So even though they are quite close together, I can still access the screws. The contactor and uh, trip is on a bit of DIN rail or DIN rail. The VFD over here is pretty much ready to just go where it needs to go. I'm not sure where to put this terminal block, um, but I know I'm going to need one uh, to break out all the cables to go to the different fans and so on. I could fit it onto the aluminium frame on the side like this. But I also notice that these machine screws here line up perfectly with the hole so it could go out the back. Wow, that's pretty perfect. So the next thing I need to do is cut out a board which I will use as the mounting plate for the enclosure um, and I'm going to have to do a bit of trial and error to work out the best way to put these components together uh, to make the most of the space that I'll end up having in the um, control box. In the next video I will start mapping out the different components on my mounting board and I'll figure out how to wire up this motor contactor unit.